No, not really. It was a long time ago now. Um, I was very young. Um, I don't really remember much from that time, but I uh, you know, remember growing up in Australia, going to school, all those things. That yeah, was amazing. I, um, I lived in a really good neighborhood. I um, had some really nice people around me and um, you know, mum and dad worked really hard. So I remember them, you know, waking up early, coming home late, um, providing for us. Uh, but yeah, school life was great as well. Um, I remember playing cricket with, with some of my friends at school you know, right through primary school and even a little bit in high school as well. Um, <clears throat> my interest sort of, I think, was always there. I always liked watching the game. It was always on TV. It was constantly sort of, I was being exposed to it, I think. Um, yeah, and I remember watching the 2016 Women's World Cup um, in India. And that was the first ever day I remember that I discovered that girls played cricket and there was a women's team. Um, I remember it was, um, I think it was in Australia, game and watching people like Elise Perry and Meg Lanning playing and, and I think from that day onwards was when I was like you know I want to play cricket I think it's a really cool thing to have that exposure to the women's game yeah well initially it was I just started playing um, on the weekends at this thing called Milo T20 Blast um, and that was the first time I sort of played um, I remember I was the I think only girl there um, so it was a bit different um, but yeah, I think I sort of progressed to the pathway that they've got here in Victoria, um, playing club cricket, then regional stuff, and then eventually district um, and, and state stuff as well. Yeah, huge. Um, I definitely would not have gone anywhere if it were my parents' support. Um, I, I guess it initially sort of getting me into the game, but then also just allowing me to grow. Um, they weren't very pushy. They weren't like, oh, you've got to play or any of that stuff. It was, they were just supporting me and what my interests were. Um, which was really good and I'm really grateful for that. I think if I had been pushed like um, I sometimes see people, I think I probably wouldn't have gotten very far. Yeah, well, I think batting just happened. Um, it was a bit, bit different because um, I, I, I do everything right-handed except for batting. Um, but yeah, I think it was just something that was a bit different as well, which I think gave me a bit of an advantage as well. Um, I guess growing up, you used to bunk to right arm as my left-hander comes in and you're like, oh, what do I do? And leg spin was was something that we sort of explored. I ex explored with my coach um, during lockdown, actually. Um, so during the COVID years, we um, were like, let's give it a go. And it was something that really came naturally to me. I was able to, to spin the ball, I guess. Um, yeah, I initially started bowling uh, medium pace and then went to off spin because I wasn't going to grow very much. And then leg spin was just something that came more naturally um, and I just enjoyed it more. So I continued with it. Well, I loved, loved watching Shane Warne. I think you can go back and look at his the, the time that he played. I think yeah, he's obviously the best that there's been. Um, but at the moment as well, people like uh, Georgie Wareham, um, Alana King as well. I think those two are really sort of put a stamp on sort of leg spin. And, you know, sometimes you see them both playing in, in the Australian team together, um, which is sort of unheard of in a way, I guess, in, in terms of team balance and stuff. But yeah, I think they really sort of, um, yeah, changed sort of the landscape for leg spin as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, huge. He, um, I, I came across him when I, just before I started playing club cricket and I've been with him ever since. Um, I think everything that I've been taught, my knowledge of the game, my skill set as well, it's it's hugely thanks to him. Um, he's, yeah, been in, in, just incredibly supportive. He's never said no if I if I asked for a hit or, or to have a bowl or anything. He's always available. Um, yeah, just someone that I can rely on, and it's been pretty cool. I think to have someone like him um, supporting me constantly throughout my journey so far. Um, yeah, without him, I definitely wouldn't be where I am. Yeah, definitely. I think sort of the more challenges you're exposed to at a young age definitely help you in the longer run. You know, it might not be very nice that at that time, but um, you sort of are thankful later on when you're faced with that sort of stuff and you're like, you know, I've actually been through this before. He, he jo we joke about it now, but he, he used to say that I used to get hit a lot and um, he would one day if I'd ever come back the week after. Um, but I think just, yeah, that, those sort of challenges facing those little bit of older boys as well, it really, really helped me in my development and my batting. Um, I found out um, at a training session uh, with um, our emerging program in Victoria, um, our coach had taken me aside and, and was like to me, oh, I just want to congratulate you, you're going to Sri Lanka. And I was 
initially I was like, why, why am I going to Sri Lanka? I'm like, it doesn't make sense. So, so he told me about it and I was like, oh, okay, it's pretty cool. I've been selected and stuff. Um, initially I was, uh, I guess, in a bit of a shock and I probably didn't believe it, to be honest. Um, but um, I was really, really happy. Um, I think it's something that um, I'm really proud of and, and I'm really happy that I was able to um, travel with the team to Sri Lanka. Um, it's a really good, it was a really good experience. Um, I loved it. Um, just the different conditions, the culture, the people was just awesome to, to experience. Well, I told my dad like very first because he had taken me to training and I was like, oh, I've been selected in the, in the tour to Sri Lanka. And he was like, he was like, really? Like what? And um, yeah, he was pretty happy as well. He was really happy. Then we told my mom and she was, at home, I think um, she didn't. She, she, I think she went. She didn't. She wasn't really sure what to say because she was sort of in a um, bit of a shock as well. I think. Um, yeah, she was really happy as well, though. She was, yeah, I think quite um, surprised as well, which was pretty pretty funny. Yeah, I think in terms of batting, um, I my mindset's to always go out and score runs. Um, you know, if I get the first ball to hit four, I'm going to hit it, um, you know, regardless of where I'm batting or whatnot um, but I think just in terms of the situations that I was put in um, I, I had to sort of go from ball one um, you know you didn't really have much time especially in the T20s um, and then when a bat a little bit down in the middle order um, you don't really have that time to settle in I guess so you've got to put the pressure back on the bowlers right away um, so I think it is something that comes naturally to me in that I want to score runs and I want to you know feel bad on ball and, and that sort of stuff. Um, but I think the strike pits and stuff just take care of themselves really. I think if the longer you bat and the more balls you face, the more likely you are to, you are to score runs. Um, so that's sort of, I guess, in, in a nutshell how I play. Um, and then bowling wise, um, I obviously love taking wickets and I think leg spin is a wicket taking option. Um, so I guess when the captain does throw the ball, it's it generally is to, to take wickets. Um, so I guess, yeah, you want, to, you want to contribute as much as you can in any way. Um, and I'm pretty fortunate that I'm an all-rounder, so I get to do that both um, batting, bowling, and even in the field as well.